Hey guys, welcome to today's show. Uh, excited to be talking about everything, the ins and outs of a warm up and how to warm up effectively. So most people inside and outside the gym are confused when it comes to warming up properly. And I often see people either spending way too much time warming up or barely warming up at all. And finding the right balance between time and effectiveness is key if you're looking to stay healthy and boost your performance in your workouts. So instead of warming up longer without any focus or direction, it's time to warm up smarter. So by dialing in your warm up, you'll see improvements in how your body feels and how it performs on a daily basis. So today we're going to be talking about how to warm up properly and some of the key components of a good and proper warm up. So let's dive on into uh, some of the uh, important aspects of this. So the problem is very uh, relevant. If you go to any gym, uh, just go around and, and kind of observe how people are, are warming up. And what I tend to see is that, like I mentioned earlier, there's people that are very diligent with putting the time into warming up, but they warm up for so long. You'll see them on a foam roller for 20 minutes, and then they'll jump on a, a bike for another 10 minutes, and then they'll go and do some stretching. And then sometimes a half hour, 40 minutes have gone by and they haven't even started their actual workout yet. And I, I'll get to this in a little bit, but I've, I've been there. So I, I know, I know how that can go. But the other side of the coin are, is the, the people that maybe you go to the gym and you jump on a bike for five minutes and then you just start your workout. You think, well, the first set's my warm up set. And then the, the second set is a little more of a warm up set. And then I'm ready to go. You do a couple arm swings, a couple leg swings, and call it a day. And we've all seen that person as well. Uh, and, that, and that can be the same thing for running as well. I see this all the time with runners that I get to work with is the first mile becomes the warm up and there's nothing much else for, for warm up and, and for cool down uh, except for the run itself. So those are some things you want to avoid because those things are not going to be extremely noticeable in terms of any problems they'll cause when it happens once. But when this happens month after month and year after year, I would see people more susceptible to injury. And also the, the other piece of this is that you're going to leave a lot of performance on the table. If you're not priming your body in the right way, then you're not going to be able to perform the way that you are supposed to. Uh, and like I said, I, I do, I do understand it. I do understand that warm up's not fun. It's not a, it's not something we enjoy doing. I, I've been there myself. I've been on both ends of it of not really doing much for a warm up, aside from jumping right in. I've also been on the other side of it of spending 30 to 45 minutes thinking I have to roll out every area and stretch everything and uh, do this and that. And then all of a sudden my warm up became longer than my actual workouts. And I don't think that's the proper approach either. Although it feels thorough, even if you're spending a lot of time doing it, there's more effective ways to get the same results in less time. So our coaching clients that we get to do customized exercise programming with are always shocked when in, when they can realize the results of an effective warm up and how it feels so different. I can think of a whole handful of people with shoulder issues, knee issues, back issues, and simply giving them a better warm up, more structure to their warm up, one that was right for them, cleared up a lot of these, cleared up almost eighty percent of the issues just because people were doing such a lousy job warming up that they were missing some of these, these key components that we're going to be talking about here in a minute that really make up a good solid warm up routine that gets your body ready, gets your muscles ready, your joints ready, and gets you ready to perform the activity of hand. So let's get into some of the details here because the big question is, so what should my warm up include and what are some recommendations for actually improving it? And a few of the things we want to talk through. So the categories are going to be time, type, and task. And we're going to go through each one of these uh, in a little bit of detail. And just to give you guys some recommendations that you can take with you in terms of, okay, where do I start? How can I start improving my, my warm up routine? So first one is time. And this is generally speaking, 10 to 15% of your workout time should be spent warming up. So for uh, if, if we're taking 10% as an example, an hour long workout, that would be six to probably six to 10 minutes spent warming up. So that should give some perspective. Some people, if they're spending two minutes swinging their arms around, swinging their legs around, probably need a, a more thorough warm up. But if you're 
at the gym for an hour, and this is total time at the gym, if you're at the gym for an hour and you're spending 20 to 30 minutes of that getting warmed up, I think there's a better way to do it. And we're going to talk about some of the specific components of, of the warm up, but the uh, principles are the same. And we want to make sure that the time being spent is effective, efficient, and gearing you up for the workout itself. The warm up should not become the work, the workout. So keep that, keep that a uh, general percentage, 10 to 15% of your total workout time should be spent in the warm up. So now we're going to get into the type. So type would refer to things like uh, cardio would be warming up on a bike, uh, mobility work, stability work, movement prep, all those things. And those are things we're going to be going and breaking down one by one. So these should be balanced and address some of the following things and typically in the following order. So we have body temperature and breathing. We have tissue and joint prep, and that includes mobility and stability work. We have movement prep, and then we have the nervous system prep. I want to get a little deeper into each one of these. So for body temp and breathing, this would be the general piece of the warm up. This would be jumping on a cardio bike, doing a, a light walk or jog. This could be jumping on a rower. This could be doing some jumping jacks or some jump rope. Think of things that are increasing your body temperature and starting to increase your breathing rate. And these are the things that can help start to just let your body know, okay, we're, we're, we're shifting from, I've been sitting at a desk all day to, all right, it's time to warm up. It's time to get ready. It's time to go. So that'd be the first thing that's usually where I like to uh, start people. <clears throat> and that gets, that sets the stage for some of the other things that you're going to be doing following. So after the body temperature and breathing, we have tissue and joint prep. And I consider this mobility and stability work and we like to do mobility work first and then follow it up with stability work. So tissue and joint prep should be anything that uh, hits some of the key areas where you might have some limitations. You don't have to do mobility work, stretching, targeted things at each joint. But if say, if you're, if you're going to be squatting, you do want to open up the hips. You do want to open up the ankles are a couple key areas that you want to make sure you're hitting, especially if you have pre-existing mobility limitations. And then you want to follow it up with some stability activities. So that could be something uh, that's creating a little bit of strength around that newfound range of motion that you did with your mobility work. So in the example of opening up your ankles, you do some joint work for your ankles. You do a little bit of targeted soft tissue foam rolling for your calves. You want to follow that up maybe with some active heel raises going through the full range of motion. So off of a step, making sure you're going all the way down, heel to the ground, and then coming all the way up to help lock in some of that range of motion. So that's a quick example of some tissue and joint prep, and that should be specific to what uh, exercises and what things you're going to be doing that day. So after the tissue and joint prep, want to move into movement prep. And this would be gearing in, uh, kind of grooving the pattern for the movement that you're going to be performing. So let's, let's stay on the squat example. Uh, this can be something This should look like the movement, sometimes exactly like the movement. So for prepping, if you're doing a barbell back squat, goblet squats would be a good way to do some movement prep, some tempo goblet squats where you're slowly lowering down, pausing at the bottom, really trying to open those hips and ankles up and then exploding on the way up. And this can also be something that looks a little less different. If you're doing a squat, it could be some lateral lunges or some forward lunges, some different things like that, that are going to simulate the actual movement and get your body ready for that specific movement after you've done the previous thing of opening up any areas that need it. So the last piece is the nervous system prep. And this is often the most overlooked piece of it is we don't get our, our body ready for what's to come and our nervous system has to be ready for what's to come. So our central nervous system controls kind of our excitement. It's our fight or flight. It's our, our these different systems. And we want to let our nervous system know that it's time to train. And if you're still, th think of it this way. If, you're, if you spend time laying on a foam roller and you spend 20 minutes on a foam roller, you start to probably get a little sleepy if you're anything like me. Is that going to get you ready to do a max, a max one rep back squat? No. And that's the things you have to keep in mind. If you're going to have a heavy lifting session, you need to do some explosive things, some uh, box jumps, some med ball slams, some kettlebell swings, some different things that are explosive in nature to help get you ready for that, to help really fire up your nervous system. 
as well as your muscles and joints to get yourself ready to go. If you know you have a, a long, grueling 30-minute AMRAP coming up, then the prep's going to look a little different. You still want to do some of those things, but it doesn't have to be uh, to the same degree. So you want to think of this as kind of turning up or turning down the dial based on what's, what's coming. So those would be the types that we cover. And some of the biggest mistakes we see with these is, is people either skipping one of these altogether or spending too long on one area and neglecting some of the other ones. So make sure that you're uh, considering all those things and working them into your warm up routine. So last we went over time, we went over type, and now we want to go over task. And this is going to be moving from general to specific. So let's take a, a bench press day. All the bros have been there. We've all done a bench press day. And let's see how this would look from moving from a general warm up to specific. So general might be something like getting on the rower, a full body thing, something that's not maybe specific to the bench press itself, or doing something like arm swings or jumping rope would be on the general side of things. But then as we move more specific, you want the, the task to start to look more and more like the movement that you're going to be doing. So for some mobility work, you might, uh, you might do some, some chest stretching, you might hang from a bar, you might do some uh, shoulder opener type things with a PVC or a band to help get the shoulders loosened up. And then you can follow that up with some stability work. So this, again, wants to look similar to the bench press. So think something like a scat push up or different plank variations that uh, might actually be doing a push up or might be doing something similar to that. And then as we move more and more specific, then we get into things like the movement prep that we talked about of doing a, a tempo push up or doing a, you know, a dumbbell bench or, or something that is getting your stabilizer muscles ready and getting your body ready to go. So those are some of the things that you want to think about. So remember, time, 10 to 15% of your total time at the gym should be devoted to warm up, the tight, make sure you're addressing body temperature and getting your breathing up, make sure you're addressing the tissue and joint prep, make sure you're addressing the movement prep, and make sure you're addressing the nervous system prep, which is actually probably the most overlooked one out of all of those. And then with the task at hand, move from more general full body activities, just getting your heart rate up to more specific things that are gonna simulate the actual workout at hand. So to sum summarize things up here, this is super important. And ignoring the warm up at the expense of it could be time, could be laziness, or just not knowing better, could put you at risk for a training injury and greatly limit your performance in the process. So instead of aimlessly completing a warm up or jumping on a cardio machine, revamp your warm up to actually get your body ready for activity. And you'll be shocked at how your body feels and how much better it performs. And we see this all the time with the coaching clients that we get to work with for their exercise programming. This makes such a big difference and it's something that's really important to focus on. So if you feel like your warm-up can use some improving, head on over to the link in the show notes to, to download our free warm-up and mobility overhaul. So this includes a five-day sample warm-up routine you can use right away for your next workout. And we'll give you guys some ideas of how to apply these things and how to get started. So thanks for listening today and we'll talk to you guys tomorrow.